Hello, everyone. I'm just going to give everyone a couple of minutes to just sign on before we go ahead and get started. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to our webcast. My name is Lee Kabalo. I am a certified Adobe Business Practitioner as well as a technical consultant with Business and Decision North America. Also in the presentation, we have Mendy Birao, who is a Business and Decision Consultant as well, as well as a certified Adobe Campaign Developer. Today we are going to discuss the power of customer engagement through marketing automation. And at the end of the presentation, our emails will be listed at the end and you'll be able to email us with any questions you might have, and we also have a period where we can answer any questions that you submit in the forum. All right, so today the objectives are as follows. We're going to discuss what's necessary in today's market to achieve positive relationships with your customers, so how to achieve positive relations, relationships through any touch points that you have with them. We're going to learn about marketing automation platforms such as Adobe Campaign, and we're also going to discuss some of the developments that Business and Decision has done on the Adobe Campaign platform, um, something known as the Efficiency Campaign Engine, or ECE. Uh, there we will discuss uh, just how it works and go over some use cases. So a little bit about our organization. Um, we are an international consulting group. We are headquartered in Paris, and with about 2,800 consultants, we are located in around 15 countries. Our primary areas of business are BI, CRM, and digital transformation, and we focus on business consulting and technical integration. So to really segue into this topic, it's important that we start at the beginning. So once upon a time, the brand-client relationship was considered easy. So brands used to interact directly with their clients. Uh, brands often built their reputation through word-of-mouth interactions, and these foundations were built on the, the direct interaction with their customers. Uh, the relationships between customers, clients, and businesses were considered strong, and as word-of-mouth spread, so did the large customer bases for businesses, allowing the businesses to grow. But things have obviously changed dramatically along the way through the creation of the Internet, social media, mobile phones. Not only has it changed the way customers interact with businesses, but it's really changed the customer expectation. Customers now are obviously able to access infinite amounts, amounts of information. Customers have tablets, smartphones, laptops. Um, they want to know about products and information wherever and whenever they are able to. And if these needs are met, they really don't have any loyalty to any particular business. Customers are really willing to move to any organization that's going to provide the information that they're looking for. And also through the impact of social media, social media has become a huge platform for customers to voice complaints on businesses. Um, when one person can lose faith or loyalty in a business, it can cause friends or family members to lose faith. Um, just by voicing complaints over social media platforms. In addition, kids also are able to use smartphones. Often kids have actual smartphones and iPhones, and they're accessing the same information that their parents are. So not only are adult consumers really informed, but, but children are also informed and are making the same types of decisions that their parents are. So how do we solve these marketing challenges? And one way is to really create personal engagements with our customers. And the way we do that is through digital transformation. 
And that is a way to attract and retain our customers and how to influence them interacting with our brand. But this is a topic that's really gained a lot of steam in the past couple of years, and, and how we define it is really important. So the way digital transformation is defined really depends on the organization that you're referring to. As you can see in the picture on the slide, there's tons of different technologies that can go into making an organization digital. So it's not really one thing that creates digital transformation or makes an organization digital. So for instance, as you can see, there's responsiveness. So an organization could be considered response or digital if they use responsive design, say, on their organizational website. So responsive design allows any user, to, depending on whether they're using a mobile phone, a tablet, a laptop, anything, to access the same content through uh, responsiveness that any other person using a device could access. So through a content management system, an organization an organization's content would render the same no matter the device that the end user is using. And also there's personalization, which is also listed. Um, personalization can exist explicitly. So, for instance, when you log into a website, an organization might ask you, what's your gender, what's your age, where are you from? And then that content is tailored directly to you based on that information. And it can even exist implicitly, so without even telling them. So, say someone logs into a hospital website, the backdrop of the hospital website could be just a general scenic landscape, have really general content, nothing really specific. But say that user goes to the OBGYN section, say she's a new mom and she's looking to find a doctor, then that website actually tracks her movement through implicit personalization. And the next time she logs in, she might see on the home page a mother holding a baby. She might see information about classes for new moms. All the content's going to be tailored actually for her. And that's a great example of how technology can really make an organization digital. So the way to really define this is to not look at it as one technology, but to look at it as a whole, because there's so many things that can go into making an organization digital. It's really the application of all these different combined technologies, not just one. And there's one goal, and it's really to support the overall customer experience. So what does this mean? It means that a quality customer experience is really what equals business success. So digital technology, it's what really creates the interactions and engagements customer has, a customer has across many different touch points with a business. So digital technology is what dictates their customer experience. And this experience is important because, because this experience can differentiate brands from other brands. It can be what attracts customers and creates loyalty with customers. And it also is what found long-term relationships with businesses. So in light of these digital experiences, it's really important to look at a purchase decision and how it's changed from previous, uh, prior to digital technology to now. So for example, we're going to discuss someone looking to purchase a car. So I'd say before the internet, uh, someone looking to purchase a car might go to one car dealership, might work with one car salesman, and work to one bottom line price that they were going to purchase the car if they were interested in. However, they would not really go to many different dealerships because it was too time intensive to look at all these different advertisements, whether it be through print, through radio, and find out all the different pricing and specials that different, different dealers are offering. But now this purchase, purchasing cycle is extremely different. So, to build upon this example, we're going to have John, who's a 32-year-old with a wife and two kids. And John is really looking to buy an SUV, something that's reliable and safe. We'll consider John someone who's well-versed, someone who knows about Kelly Blue Book, knows about car buying, and knows about determining the best price. So just as he would before, John's going to go to the dealership. He's going to work towards his bottom line price, but he's also going to think, maybe I can do better. So he's going to take his smartphone out, he's going to log to kellybluebook.com, and he's going to see that there's listings for the average bottom line price for people purchasing the same car in his area. Now, John's getting the same a price that's within that realm, so he feels comfortable, but maybe on the side of the page, he sees a dealership that's offering the same bottom line price, but it's offering a better tax rebate option. So now, although John would have normally purchased the car from that dealership, he's going to head to the dealership with a better tax rebate option, just because that ad popped up on his phone. Now, say John doesn't even know what kind of car he wants to buy. Say he's picking between a Toyota or a Honda. He doesn't know if he wants a RAV4 or a CRV. All he knows is that he wants something reliable and safe for his family. And his first car actually happened to be a Toyota. So that was something that really kind of established an affinity for the brand. He feels confident that it's a, that it's a good brand. But he's still just not sure. He wants to be overly cautious when he makes his decision. 
So he decides, I'm going to pull my friends on Facebook. So he goes on Facebook. He says, hey, should I buy a RAV4 or a Honda CRV? He pulls his friends. His friends say a couple bad experiences they've had with the Toyota. Um, they, they recommend that he actually log on to some car repair forums, uh, check out consumer reports, which he does, and he sees that other people had a couple bad experiences with the Toyota. Now, even though his first car was a Toyota, and even though he had this long established loyalty for the brand, he's going to pick the Honda because, because his friends pushed him in that direction. Now, even to push this further, say John wants to get his car an oil change three months down the road after making the purchase. So John was ecstatic at the way he was treated at the Honda dealership. Um, the Honda dealer actually recommended that he go to their service center whenever he gets any work done in the car. He feels that, okay, I had a good experience. I trusted the salesman. Maybe I'll do that. But I'm just going to log in onto the website and see what they charge for an oil change. So he does that. He sees that online the pricing is at $60. John feels this pricing is ridiculously high, and he sees an ad on the side of the page for Valvoline. They're offering a special $30, $30 oil change when you present the coupon. So John sends that coupon to his mobile phone. He goes over to the Valvoline dealership, and he gets a oil change for the same price using the coupon scanner. So now not only has John lost his loyalty to the Honda dealership service center, but he now has gained loyalty for Valvoline. So what this really shows is how digital technology is really changing the way consumers interact. Um, the big challenge before was that marketers had to decide whether to spend advertisement money on print, radio, and TV, and now it's completely different. Now we have to decide whether we want to spend money on Facebook advertisements, we want to promote through Twitter, we want to use YouTube videos. The list just goes on and on and on. And how we make these smart decisions is really the challenge. So the way we start by analyzing the challenges is by determining them. So one of the main challenges is speed. So customers really expect speed, the need to market in real time. Customers have phones, they have tablets, they have computers. They're able to access information without any form of delay. And they want to be able to access this content wherever and whenever they want to. There's no time for marketers to have time-delayed response or analysis. And if they take too long, customers have no problem going to going to an organization's website or business that will provide the information that they need. Also, there's complexity. There's all this data coming from all these different marketing channels, which is known as big data, and customers are basically drowning in it. The data is fragmented. It's coming from all these different places. It's on different platforms. It's in different formats, and it's really impossible for them to make sense of it all. Also, customer loyalty has really changed. So now, as I said before, customers are calling the shops. They want their information available when they want it, and they have no problem switching and losing loyalty for one business and gaining loyalty for another. Consumers are better informed, and they have no problem shifting to a company that's going to support their needs. And finally, return on investment. So 90% of the CEOs don't even really trust the chief marketing officer, and marketers are becoming disconnected from the organizational goals. So how can these modern marketers satisfy the demands of these empowered consumers? And the answer is cross-channel marketing and the power of marketing automation. So what is cross-channel marketing? So cross-channel marketing is all about coordinating multiple channels to deliver one consistent, relevant, and effective communication across all these different touch points to your customers. So really, it's taking advantage of the ability to collect all this information from these digital touch points, as I said before, known as big data, and creating these customer records that allow us to do inbound and, inbound and outbound marketing techniques that are not only personalized, but they're relevant and they're just, they're better. So how do we deliver these consistent marketing communications across all these different channels? That's definitely the biggest challenge. And one answer is with campaign automation tools. So what these tools do is they pull all that big data from these customer profiles and from all these channels, and they create all these integrated customer profiles that allow you to do outbound marketing, such as email, mobile, direct mail, SMS, or inbound marketing, web, social, through call centers or kiosks, that creates customer experience that's not only relevant, but it's also personalized, it's effective, and it's just positive. And one example of an automation platform that we at B&D feel is a leader in this space is Adobe Campaign. So Adobe Campaign is a software solution that sits within the Adobe Marketing Cloud, and the Adobe goal is really as a whole, as a company, is to provide the best digital experience across all multiple touch points. And at B&D, we find them to be a leader in the space, and as you can see, Adobe Campaign is the sixth solution in the set. 
So what Adobe Campaign really helps you do and what the overall goal of the platform is to really solve these customer engagement challenges. Its ability to simplify your marketing tasks through campaign automation capabilities and intuitive design is really what sets it apart. It's built on this marketing database that allows you to take all that data that you import and transform and allows you to export it and make use of it. And it has this beautiful dashboard that allows you to monitor, monitor the performance of your different campaigns from one seamless center. In addition, it allows you to accelerate your marketing needs by cr increasing your productivity and the time that you take your campaign to market. So you can easily create these personalized one-off campaigns and recurring campaigns for your customer without any difficulty. You can discover your customer's needs. You can build these customer profiles with all that big data that not only captures their interests, activities, and interactions, but allows you to create these smarter campaigns. You can delight your customers through offers and email. You can send these personalized messages. You can do individual recipients on leading to positive customer engagement. And not only that, you can control your solicitation. So this is huge. So one of the biggest things about creating negative relationships with your customers is by sending them too much messaging. So you can control the frequency of your communication. And you can create trust with your clients. And that allows you to maintain that positive relationship. And finally, just create, it allows you to create value for your organization. So you can, you can track the campaign metrics from the dashboard, allowing you to see the budget, the cost, the return on investment, the delivery status, the recipient activity. It makes your team more efficient, and it allows you to generate way more revenue at a much lower cost. So what are the six unique capabilities that really set Adobe Campaign apart from its competitors? So one is their visual campaign orchestration. So it makes it really easy for marketers to design and manage their marketing programs with this nice visual center. There's an integrated customer profile, which allows you to capture all the data, all the big data, as I discussed before, and at least and take advantage of all their different interactions across multiple touch points. You can do target segmentation, which allows you to make cross-channel campaigns way more effective and, by, and allows you to personalize them. There's email execution and deliverability, which controls your email execution and increases your delivery rates, and it allows you to communicate the right information at the right time without over-soliciting them. There's real-time interaction, which allows you to create one-to-one -one offers in real time, so there's no delay to market. And finally, there's an operational reporting section, so there's the dashboard that I discussed before, which allows you to easily see campaign performance and your metrics that your marketers want to see on a daily basis. So where does B&D fit in all of this? So we at B&D, we know that Adobe Campaign is really a strategic investment that your customers in your customer's journey. And we, want, we feel that we want our clients to get a full use of the, of the tool so that they feel that they have every bit of functionality and feel confident in their investment. And we at B&D feel that our expertise provides that confidence. Now, we have also seen that implementations can be long and exhausting and expensive. And our goal at B&D is to really reduce this implementation time and provide an accelerated return on investment for our clients. So here's a nice slide that details our partnership with Adobe. So as you can see, our partnership was formed in 2005. Um, we worked on a multitude of different platforms in the Adobe Cloud Marketing Suite. And on the right, you'll see a bunch of different projects that we've done over, over the past few years, so since our partnership was formed. So while Adobe Campaign functionality is something that we feel is almost unmet by competitors, uh, we've noticed through our project that there's definitely a technical gap that exists between the end user and the platform. So really to have full functionality of the platform, we've noticed that the marketing end user really needs to have an understanding, maybe not a heavy understanding, um, but something that uh, allows us to a heavy understanding, but something that shows or teaches the customer to use SQL, XML, HTML, as well as workflow design. So as you see in the picture, there's um, an image of workflow design that exists in Adobe Campaign. So this can kind of appear to be complex for marketing end users. Now, marketing users are not necessarily trained in design or coding, and they often struggle to use the, to use the tool. I'm not sure if this can display. messages that it's not. Anyways, um, so we saw at BND that this was definitely a challenge for our users, uh, and we saw it as an opportunity to improve the platform. So we created what is known as the Efficiency Campaign Engine, and we'll, you'll hear us call it the ECE or EZ. And what it is, is a module that automates campaign creation, 
And the goal of this module is really to increase the return on investment for our customers, reduce implementation time, and really reduce the cost of deployment out of the box. So the goal and the features of EC are to really be able to run continuous or fixed campaigns without the need to build a workflow, so without the need to build what I showed before in that image, and allowing us to also see targeting counts at each stage. Now, end users are able to gain this functionality without learning how to code, so without having to learn SQL or XML or HTML. And it's really, and it's really a huge benefit because it also allows them to create one-to-one -one touch points with customers through incremental or recurring campaigns with really ease of function. So also content, just as with out-of-the-box features, can be personalized, and, and there can be predetermined fields specific to an organization's needs, and we can also um, just provide the general, general features that come out of the box. Finally, it works across all these various marketing channels that I discussed before, so all the various touch points that exist today. And it also enables uh, clients to do A-B testing, a -B testing with their customers. So from here on, I'm going to have Medi, our Adobe campaign developer, break down ECE further and also give us some use cases on how it works. Thanks, Lee. So uh, ECE wraps up uh, an intuitive user interface around the design of the campaign workflow. It uh, enables the campaign templates to have entry exit conditions and uh, an unlimited number of touch points with their own features and deliveries. The campaign template will have an engine that is designed to run in the background without any end user action or knowledge of workflow design and maintain a consistent inflow of new recipients who qualify for the entry condition for the campaign. Each uh, recipient will be tracked as uh, to where they are in the campaign process and the campaign will be designed to run continuously or on a fixed schedule or time period. So the three-step process is composed by the target, the touch points, and uh, the exit. After selecting the, star, the standard campaign coverages, the end user will be presented with additional navigation options for target, touch point, and exit on the edit tab for the campaign. These options will, uh, will be uh, only visible if the user selects automatic as uh, the custom value for the campaign type option. The campaign target defines dynamic entry condition for the campaign. When conditions are satisfied, the, co the corresponding recipients on board with the campaign and cycle through the corresponding touch points in sequential order is defined. The campaign touch points are easily configured and define all the campaign's communication with the recipients. The campaign exit defines the dynamic escape condition for the campaign. When satisfied, they automatically exclude the corresponding recipients from the campaign, no matter the, the current touch points for the, for the recipients. So we're going to take a look at two very common use cases, cross-selling campaign and a new product launch. The goal is to get more visual with EC and uh, see how we can leverage this engine to quickly and efficiently implement such highly automated campaigns going through the two-step process. Cross-selling campaigns are running on a daily basis to target customers who purchase a product or one of a collection of products, therefore increasing multiple touch points. Those campaigns can be running for months once implemented without any user action. New product launch campaigns are more like a customer journey with touch points running in a sequential order and possibly leveraging multiple channels such as email, direct mail, SMS, or social. All right. So the first use case is uh, the cross-selling campaign. First, let's have a quick look on how we would implement such campaign as a campaign using a classic workflow. This campaign, this campaign is executed on a daily basis by a scheduler. So this, this uh, campaign will target all the customers who purchase one of the product in this campaign scope 14 days ago and send an email accordingly to the purchase product. The final target has to exclude all the recipients who already received the cross selling communication in the last two months. As you can see in the area one and two, multiple activities are needed to achieve these requirements. There are other activities that need to be configured. In the area three, the priority between multiple touch points in case a customer purchases the multiple eligible products in the same day is defined by the duplication. In the area four, basic personalization is implemented to customize the delivery content using the first name of the recipient. Finally, in the area five, all the deliveries related to all the different contents for each product are implemented. So now let's see how this campaign is implemented using EC. So the only thing that remains the same is the configuration of the specific delivery template for each content version. Of course, there are more advanced designs we can use uh, as a single template for multiple touch points with conditional blocks. 
to change the content according to the promoted product, but uh, any, advanced, any advanced content design will be used in the same way for a classic workflow or through an easy campaign. In our case, let's assume we have a classic design with a single delivery template for each, promo for each promoted product. So let's use this first use case to go over the three-step process and see how to create an automatic campaign running through EC from scratch. In a new campaign, let's select the automatic uh, to campaign type as automatic. So we have three new tabs uh, now available in the left menu, target, touchpoint, and exit. Now we can access the target section and define the segmentation. This is step one. In our case, we are targeting all the recipients with the transaction 14 days ago with the status equal to process. Then we have the touch points creation. This is the step two. In our case, we have three different touch points for each version of the cross-selling communication, depending on the product promoted. So this is the first touch point configuration interface. We are choosing the content template used, the delivery time, and we are adding filtering conditions to set the touch point only for recipients who have purchased this specific product. In our case, this touch point will be sent to all the purchases in the skincare products category. This is the second touch point. You will notice that the priority weight is defined for this one. It means that if a customer purchased both products triggering touch point one and touch point two 14 days ago, he will receive only touch point two. Also, a start date and an end and end date are defined in the touch point. It means that this one will be active only from October 1st to November 21st, because we want uh, another version of the content for December, basically. So we are creating touch point three with the same conditions, but a different active template. So here's the touch point three. Uh, it has the same configuration as touch point two, but is active from December 1st to December 31st. As you can see in the picture condition, touch point two and touch point three are sent only to recipients who purchase one of those two specific products. The step three is the exit condition. In our case, uh, we are excluding from this campaign all the recipients who always received the cross chain communication in the last two months. So as we just saw, as soon as I get my created ready, I can easily and quickly implement a highly automated cross selling campaign, promoting seamlessly associated products to past transactions without going through any workflow configuration or manipulation. So that was our first use case with simultaneous daily prioritized touch points. Another interesting use case is a new product launch with multiple touch points building a customer journey. In this example, we will be simulating a new financial product launch by a financial institution who wants to communicate this uh, with its also with its uh, wall seller and sales rep network. So we have the same step as the target creation. In that case, all the enrolled recipients are targeted in this uh, in this campaign. These are all the configured touch points. In our example, we'll have six touch points composing our customer journey for this product launch. Let's see the details. The first touch point is straightforward. It's the product presentation email. All the enrolled recipients will receive the first touch point day one after the enrollment. This touch point is active from October 1st to October 31st, as we are considering this as the onboarding period. The second touch point uh, has a wait time of four days, and the filtration conditions target only recipients who receive the first touch point. Those recipients will receive the second touch point day four after the enrollment. It's the webinar invite. The third touch point is the webinar follow up. It contains all the information about the webinar, links, conference bridge, and materials. It will be sent only to recipients who open the webinar invite and register to, to this event. This touch point has a wait time of seven days. It means that recipients will receive the webinar invite, open it, and registered will receive this follow-up three days after the initial invite. The touch point four is the webinar summary. Assuming that the webinar took place on November 17, we set the start date at the, of this touch point uh, at November 18 to send this, this summary the day after. All the recipients who attended the event will be included in the, in the target of this, of this touch point. The touch point five is a subscription form to apply and become an official reseller to this new product. The start date is set up on November 23rd, and all the recipients who attended the webinar will receive the reseller's form. 
Finally, the touch point six is the direct mail piece uh, with the legal paper to fill. The start date is the December 1st, and only the recipient who subscribes mm -hmm. using the form from the touch point five will receive this mail piece. The last step is the exit condition. In our case, we are assuming that the firm just blacklists us, so we want to make sure any more seller from this firm will receive any communication in regard to this new product. So that, that's where we add this, uh, this exit condition. So again, assuming that uh, our created are ready, it's a, straightforward, it's a straightforward process to implement such campaigns. In this uh, case, combining second show cross-channel uh, touch points to build the customer journey. I'll hand it back to Lee to, uh, to wrap up the meeting and uh, move to the questions. Thank you, Mary. So finally, we just have this chart that highlights EPE versus the classic workflow. So as you can see through um, the listings, that functionality for both is primarily the same. What really we want to highlight is the average time to implement. So on average, the classic workflow can take up to two days to implement. Now, that uh, can go really complex, but also our EC, um, EC module only can take on average up to two hours. So that's a huge difference. It's a huge change in terms of time and money, and um, uh, also in terms of training, it's much easier to use. And here's another chart that highlights EC versus classic workflow. So keep in mind that EC is really for highly automated campaigns um, and is not really for 2-2 two -two complex workflows, although we can implement it so that uh, with some in initialization works, that allows it to be as complex and personal as the regular workflow. But as you can see, the time to implement is dramatically less. So thank you for attending our presentation. Our emails are listed right here, so feel free to email us with any questions. Also, feel free to visit our website to see some of the innovative work that we're doing. And also, feel free to email us if you would like to set up a demo. And I will take any questions. Just give you a minute or two to submit any questions that you might have to the forum. So once again, just feel free to provide any questions that you might have. And if you don't have any questions now, feel free to email us with anything after the presentation. So it doesn't appear as though we have any questions. Once again, feel free to email us. We really thank you for coming and uh, attending this webcast, and uh, we hope you have a great day.